Would you speak to us today through your spirit? Encourage us, challenge us. So many of us have so much on our plate today and tomorrow, but God, we want to make it about you. Because it's not the presence, it's your presence that matters. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hey, I want to uh, talk a little bit about purpose, but I want to begin with a couple, couple photos, if you don't mind. Do you mind that? Um, and let me just say this too. I don't know if you're on this, Jade. Um, don't put up the picture yet, but um, today when you leave, if you got that door right there, we have a wall created. Can you throw the picture up? Do we have it? Look at that picture. Who's the good looking guy right there? So there's a wall over there. We encourage you just to, you could take a, a Christmas photo, post it on Facebook. You know, you can, you can tag us. Is that what you do? I'm not on social media. You tag it, right? Is that what you do? Help me out, somebody. Yeah? Okay. Do that. Do that. Do that after service. Hey, let's talk about purpose. I got a couple items that are really strange. See if you know the purpose of these. Here we go. Here's the first one. Does anybody know what that is? And I know you want to go, it's a keychain. It is. But it's a keychain, and you take this white part out from it, and you use it for something. Does anybody have any idea? You ready for this? It's a phone amplifier. I know, I know. Aren't you excited? Everybody gets one today. Are you excited? No, we don't have anything for you. You get nothing. You get nothing. But listen, this was given at a, at a Christmas party a couple of years ago, and you take the white part, and you put it next to your speaker and your phone, and it amplifies your phone. Didn't know the purpose for that, did you? How about this one? Here's a good one. How about this one? You know what that is? It's a board with a handle. Anybody have any idea? It, it, it does. It works in the bed. You put it between your mattress and your box spring, and it gives you a handle to get up. Isn't that interesting? Well, you look at it, and you go, I don't know what that's for. But once you know the purpose, it makes so much sense. Doesn't it? You see where I'm going with this, yes? Can we do a few more? Do you mind? Are you going anywhere? All right, good. Here's the next one. Here's a good one. What? Somebody bought a house, and this was underneath the cabinet. Ooh, you nailed it. Good for you. We have one for you today. No, we don't. We don't. It is a bottle opener. You put your jar underneath, and you twist, and it holds. Yeah, okay. Okay, whatever. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. Yeah. We know what the banana is, okay? So don't say, it's a banana. We know it's a banana. What is this thing right here? Yes, Lena. Good for you. You get one today too, but we don't have any for you. This is a, it's called a uh, steel um, soap. And what you do is after you chop onions and garlic, you rub your hands with that and it takes the smell off. Isn't that interesting? Everybody's getting one today. Are you excited? It's like Oprah Winfrey. And you get a car and you get a car. No, no, it's not. We don't have any of these items because they're stupid. One more. You ready for one more? Here we go. It's not a ninja flying disc, okay? I'll just tell you that much right now. Do you have any idea what this is? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anybody? Thank you for laughing, Mimi. Um, that is a tool you use when you're making concrete and you want to keep your rebar from falling into the concrete. It holds it. Isn't that interesting? Aren't you, aren't you glad you came to church today? I mean, you, you guys are just a wealth of knowledge today. It's unbelievable. Don't say anything, Frank. Don't make me come down there. Here's the point. Listen, here's the point. Everything has a purpose, including you. Everything has a purpose. Look at your notes. If you have your notes or if you have them online. Listen, everything has a purpose because without purpose, things are useless. Everything has a purpose. Every one of those stupid items have a purpose. And if you don't know what they're for, you will misuse it or abuse it. Does it make sense today? As simple as it sounds, every human being as well has purpose. Every person here watching online, every, every, there's billions of people in the world. Everyone was created, listen to me, with a purpose. Everyone. Just like everything in the universe has a purpose. I used this quote before, but I love it. If you could put it up. It's from Mark Twain. He said this, and I'm paraphrasing. This isn't exactly what he said, but I'm just paraphrasing. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. I mean, that's my message today. I want you to know why you're here. You're not just here to earn a paycheck. You're not just here to, to teach a class 
or to work at a job or to raise children or to be a part of your grandchildren's lives. That's not, you're not just created for, for nothing. You have a purpose. Every single pers- person has a purpose. And we need to know, here we go, we need to know the why. Here's the why. I love this verse. It's from Acts. Um, we know that Luke wrote Acts. We're studying the Gospel of Luke. We'll begin it. We'll be back in it January, the first week of January. But Luke also wrote the book of Acts, and he said this. He, he, he's talking to a bunch of people that know the history of Israel, but he says this about King David, and I love this verse. It's uh, Acts 13, 36. When David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep or he died. It's a nice way to put it. And it says he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. When David, King David, had served his purpose in his generation, God took him to heaven. The same can be true of you. Do you understand that you have a purpose in life? You have a purpose in all of this. And it's your job, hear me friends, it's your job to find out why. Because if you don't, then you're going to misuse what God has given you. Your time and your talent and your treasure. Everyone has a purpose. Listen, if your heart is beating, then God has a purpose for your life. And I would... I would probably say right now, I'm just going to assume that your, your heart is beating because you're still awake and you're looking at me. And some of you are looking at me strange. And that's okay. I'm used to it. But if your heart is beating, God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you. And you need to find out. You remember those pictures, how goofy they were? If you saw one of those objects and you didn't know what it was for, you could misuse or abuse what, what has been given to you. Your purpose. Your time on earth. And listen to me, friends, this happens every day in billions of lives. And I'm not exaggerating because there are billions of people on this planet that have, they don't know their purpose. They don't know why they're here. They don't understand why they're here. And that is why alcohol abuse is up during Christmas. Do you know that? That's why anxiety and depression and drug abuse is up during, during depression. I read this article this week called, listen to this, the connection between the holiday blues and substance abuse. Can I just share with you a little bit about it? It's an amazing article. It says this, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, 27% more people drink alcohol. It's a lot to go up during, during one month. Do you know that alcohol providers make about $49 billion between Christmas, between Thanksgiving and Christmas? $49 billion, not an M, a B. And this article, as I read it, began to give you all the reasons of why Substance abuse, alcohol abuse, anxiety, depression, all these things go up because if I can can just give a few of you, um, travel. How many are traveling today or tomorrow? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, we go to go to see people. There's there's traffic. Not going to get started. How about this? Family dynamics. You're going to see people you haven't seen in months. You're going to see people you don't even like. (laughs) And they have your last name. Isn't that crazy? How about grief? There's some empty chairs this Christmas of people that have hopefully gone to heaven. They're not here anymore. Just busy, man. We're just busy. On the right here, my wife goes, hey, don't lollygag today because we got stuff to do. And I'm like, yes, sir. (laughs) Don't lollygag. Don't talk to too many people. We got a lot of stuff to do. And so do you. Wrapping gifts, preparing, making dishes that nobody likes. We have parties and events. Overspending was one of the things they talked about. Hey, guess what? January's coming. You know what comes with January? The credit card bill. How about this one? In the article, they said unrealistic expectations. We expect, we expect this Christmas to be the best Christmas ever. If I could just get that gift, if I could just get around some friends that I know, if we could just do this, we have these unrealistic expectations. And we also, we also struggle with comparison. And you're scrolling on your phone and somebody's having a party and you weren't invited. All these things lead to misuse or abuse of our purpose. Why? Why do so many do this? Because they don't know the purpose of their life. They don't know that God has a purpose for them. That God has a plan for their life. And if you will just surrender, you can know God's purpose today for you. Listen, 
Whatever you think will satisfy, if it's not God, it won't. It never will. Listen, we had a couple, we had about 100 kids in here a couple weeks ago. We were doing our Christmas outreach, and I asked the kids, what's your best gift ever? And I shared this a little bit with you because I remember Ernell said he, he remembered that gift. My best gift was like a Tyco racetrack. Come on, 19, anybody? 1978, 80, right? You get the little thing and the car would go around the track and then fall off. Do you know where that is today? In a landfill. I don't still have it. I don't still play with it. <laughs> I know some of you think I do, but I don't. Trust me, I don't. But it's in a landfill. And most of the gifts you get tomorrow, sorry to say, will end up in a landfill. Unless it's diamonds or gold. But most of it's going to end up in a landfill somewhere. Aren't you happy you came to church to find out your gift tomorrow is going to be in a landfill in a couple years? <laughs> Yay! I have three thoughts today. And we'll be done early. Can I get an amen? Shame on you for amen in that. I'm going, to, I'm going to get you out of here early. We've got a service tonight. We've got a service tonight. But listen, three thoughts, three thoughts. First one is this, if you're following in your notes. Without God, we have no purpose. Without God, we have no purpose. Now, for those of you that are like all in with God, good for you. And I am too. But I, I, just for a few minutes, I need to get a little heady. Can I do that? Can I just hurt your brain for a couple minutes? Can I do that? I'm going to read a couple things that... I, I, for me, is like, it hurts my head after I read it. It's one of those things. Um, but here's, here's the point. So many people today believe in the Big Bang, not to show the Big Bang. And they think like, like, like the universe created, came out of nothing, and then there was something. Which my question to those people all the time is, why is there nothing, 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 and then something? And no one can ever answer that. Because they've removed God from the equation. God is the creator. He's the one, the Bible says, spoke into existence, the universe and the stars. And he didn't like have to create it. He just spoke it because he's that powerful. But when you remove God from the equation, it makes things very difficult to find purpose. Now, I'm going to read from someone who's super intellectual, way over my head. His name is um, William Craig Lane. He's, in a Christian, he's a Christian apologetic, apologist. So what he does, he defends the faith. Okay? But I put the quote up so you can follow along with me. It's a little long, but stay with me on this because it's really, really important. Because without God, there's no purpose. When you remove God from the equation, your life, my life, doesn't matter anymore. Listen to what he says. Suppose the Big Bang had never occurred. Suppose the universe never existed. What ultimate difference would it make? The universe is doomed to die anyways. Did you guys know that? I, I, I'm, I'm weird like this. I watch the Discovery Channel. I know. I, I love to watch all these intellectual people that are way smarter than me, and they say, well, the sun is going to burn out in 7 million years. And then what happens? They're like, we all die. <laughs> Yay. Listen, the universe is doomed to die anyway. In the end, it makes no difference whether the universe ever existed or not. Therefore, it is without ultimate significance. And those, no purposes, that's me. I wrote that. I put that in there. That's what he's saying. He's saying this. If you just believe, if you, if you remove God from the equation, it doesn't matter. You have no purpose. Your life is doomed. The same is true of the human race. Mankind is doomed, is a doomed race in a dying universe. Next one. Because the human race will eventually cease to exist. It makes no ultimate difference whether it ever did exist. Mankind is more is no more significant than a swarm of mosquitoes or a barnyard of pigs, for their end is all the same. And how many know I'm a little bit better than a mosquito and a pig? And so are you. Even though some of us are going to act like pigs tonight and tomorrow and eat too much. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's our own issue. The same blind cosmic process that coughed them up in the first place will eventually swallow them all again. Do you get that? That is a huge statement. Because when you remove God, there's no purpose in the universe. It doesn't matter. There's one more. And the same is true for each individual person. The contributions of the scientists to advance the human knowledge, the research of the doctor to alleviate pain and suffering, the effort of the diplomat to secure peace in the world, the sacrifices of good men everywhere to better the lot of the human race, all of these come to nothing 
because you removed God and you removed purpose. It doesn't matter. This is the horror of modern man. Because he ends in nothing, he is nothing. Anybody's head hurt besides me? Without God, we have no purpose. It has to begin with God. And I don't know where you are today in your life. I don't know if you've been trying to look for purpose or you feel like your life is just a mess and you can't get it together. It comes down to God. It comes down to surrender. It comes down to purpose with God. Without God, we have no purpose. Here's the second one. Purpose comes from God. Without God, we have no purpose, but purpose comes from God. Let me read a little bit of 1 Corinthians 12. It talks about the body. And it's saying this, the body's made up of different parts. You have an ear, you have an eye, you have a nose, you have a mouth. All these things do something to help the body. And Paul is writing, he's saying, listen, we're the body of Christ. You have a purpose in the body of Christ. Listen to this. Even so, the body is made up of many, uh, many, excuse me, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm at the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for the, that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the car, or the ear, excuse me, should say, because I am an eye, I, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, or were an, excuse me, if the whole body were an ear, excuse me, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. That's saying this, you have a purpose. God has given you a purpose. You have to discover it through him. It goes on to say, we're, we're going to leave off. But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. And then verse 27 says this, now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is part of it. When we find our purpose in God, we figure out that we're part of the body. And you play a part in the body of Christ. It's not just the pastor. It's not just Nick and the worship team. You have a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Do you remember our verse? When David had served God's purpose in his generation, he fell asleep. You have a purpose. And so since it's Christmas, I want to take a little bit of time. we got time. And I want to read a little bit of the Christmas story. Because have you ever thought about the characters in the Christmas story? And I say characters because I can't say people because one of them is an angel. Have you ever thought about the characters and their purpose in the Christmas story? Let's begin with this. We'll begin with Mary. Mary. Luke 1, 26 says this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And if you know the rest of the story, the angel says this, hey, listen, you're going to become pregnant. And she's like, whoa, wait a minute, I'm a virgin. And he's like, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. Do you know Mary's part in this was to carry baby Jesus and deliver him? She had a purpose in the Christmas story. You know who else had a purpose? Gabriel, the angel. God sent him to Mary to tell her. He played a part. He had a purpose. The angel had a purpose in the story. And then we hear of Joseph. He's mentioned here too. Joseph has a part. And I don't know if you know this, but Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. And they were engaged. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes on that one. You're pregnant. You know? We haven't been together. So who have you been with? And she's like, it's a miraculous. It's a miraculous um, pregnancy. Look what it says to Joseph. Matthew 1. And this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. In other words, they were engaged. But before they came together, you know what that means, right? I have a diagram to explain. I do not. She was found to be pregnant through, help me out, the Holy Spirit. God did it. God did it. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to a public disgrace, which he could have. He could have said, Listen, my fiance is pregnant, and we weren't together, so I'm divorcing her. I'm not even going to go through with this marriage and pregnancy. He could have done that, but he didn't. He had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Take Mary as your wife. 
because who she, the, the individual, the child inside of her is the savior of the world. Joseph played a part. Mary, Gabriel, Joseph. Come on, you know what's next. The shepherds. Didn't they have a part in this? Absolutely. Luke 2 tells us this. And there were shepherds living out in the field, fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord showed around them. And they were terrified, because I'd be terrified too if I saw an angel. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be great joy for everyone, all people, even us today. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Don't you get that? God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you. His favor rests upon you. When the angels had left them they had, and, and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Hey, we're simple people. Let's go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Isn't that incredible? It doesn't end there. Their purpose was not only to see baby Jesus, but look at the next verse. This is so good. Most people miss this in a story. Next verse, verse 16, 16, 18. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. You know their part? Their part was to go see baby Jesus and then tell everybody again. They had a purpose. Mary had a purpose. Gabriel had a purpose. Joseph had a purpose. The shepherds had a purpose. What's the next, what's the next one? Who's the, who's the other character in this? Come on. Come on, you know. The wise men. The magi. They had a part in this. Now, I don't want to burst your bubble. But they were not with the shepherds. The night that Jesus was born. I know we, thank you. I know we set up our nativity scene and there's like shepherds and wise men. Eh, thanks for playing. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Jesus was probably 18 months, two years old when they came. Hate to burst your bubble. Let me read the story. So they go to Herod, or they go to, yeah, Herod first. Herod's in charge of all of Jerusalem, all that area. They go to Herod and they say, hey, hey, we want to worship the king of the Jews. And Herod's like, I'm king. I don't know about another king. But he, and he's, he kind of manipulates the situation. Do you know this? And he says, go and find out and come report to me so I can worship him too. But really he wants to kill baby Jesus. Matthew 2. They went on their way. This is the, she- this is the Magi. And the star they had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Didn't say baby. It says child. On coming to the house... Or excuse me, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with, Mary, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down. This is a two-year-old. They bowed down, and they worshipped him, and then they opened their treasures and presented him with gold and frankincense and myrrh. Do you know that each one of those gifts means something for Jesus? I'm not going to tell you what they mean, because that's what my message is tonight. you got to come back to find out. Each one of the gifts had a purpose, and you will be amazed at what the purpose is. Because you're like, I don't want frankincense. I'll take the gold. Come on, somebody. Right? But myrrh and frankincense, all pointing to Jesus, our Savior. That's tonight. But here's the thought. Listen. Each person had a purpose. Each character in the story, Gabriel, Mary, Joseph, shepherds, magi, had a purpose. Hear me, friends. You have a purpose as well. God has a purpose for you. Here's my last thought. And I told you I'm going to get you out of here early, and I'm going to be a man of my word. Our purpose is to bring glory to God. To bring God glory, excuse me, to bring God glory. Without purpose, or excuse me, without God, we have no purpose. We said that purpose only comes from God. And here it is. If you want to bring, if you want to know your purpose, bring glory to God. Bring glory to God. And you have to start with this. Put the next one up. To know God's purpose, you must know God. Without him, you will never know your purpose in life. Listen, let me tell you something. Your purpose is not to make a paycheck. Your purpose is not to build up your account so you can give something to your kids. Your purpose is not just going to work, 
and, and doing your work and that's it. Your purpose is not just, hey, I want to get married someday. Hey, I want to have children someday. They're all good things. But your real purpose is to bring glory to God in everything that you do. So maybe this Christmas, listen, maybe this Christmas, your purpose is to take your Bible out tomorrow and read, read the story to your family. What a great way. Even before the gifts, even if the kids are restless, they're like, sit down, we're going to read the story. Maybe your purpose is to read the Christmas story to your family. Take some time, maybe, and pray and be grateful before you open any gifts. And say, God, we, we just acknowledge you. And these gifts are great, but you're, the best gift ever is Jesus. Maybe your purpose is to love people more. Maybe this year coming up, you need to love people more. Maybe your purpose this year is to create healthy relationships in your life and to get unhealthy relationships out. Don't amen that. They might be sitting next to you. <laughs> Maybe your purpose this year, upcoming, is to make a difficult stand for Christ at your workplace or at your school. To make a stand and say, you know what? I'm not giving into that. I'm not laughing at that joke. I'm not doing that. Maybe it's inviting a friend or neighbor to church tonight. When you leave today, there's cards if you want to invite them. If you're coming back to hear Pastor Matt's amazing message on the gifts. Maybe you can invite someone. Maybe you can bring someone. It's a great time. We light candles. We sing. It's going to be an awesome night. Maybe it's serving others. Maybe tomorrow after you open the gifts, you go to Atlantic City. And you say, you know what, I'm going to go over there and I'm just going to help. My, my family and I did that for years. I don't do it now because I have chemo, I have chemo on Monday. I can't go over there. I just can't be exposed to that. But maybe, maybe your purpose is tomorrow morning after you get the gifts to shoot over there and just help people. Just serve people. Just love on them. I love what Brian does with his ministry there called City Lights. He gives out gifts to all the people. You know what's going on over there now? They're having a Christmas party. I know some of you are like, what? I got to sit here. I could have had a Christmas party. But they're having a party over there. They decorated the tables. They have a ton of gifts for them. It's awesome. It's amazing. Maybe you need to sign up to serve once a month or once every two months because he has so many people serving now. It's awesome. Once every two months. Maybe this year or, or the next couple of days is you need to demonstrate integrity at work or at home. Maybe that's your purpose right now. Say, I'm going to make a stand for God. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a, a man or woman of integrity. Maybe it's surrendering fully to God. Maybe you have it. Maybe you've been kind of playing a little bit, kind of on the fence a little. Like you come to church and you raise your hands and you sing the songs and it's all great. But then on Monday or Tuesday, you're getting into stuff you shouldn't get into. Maybe your purpose is just, God, I'm going all in with you. Total surrender. Maybe it's just obeying God. Maybe it's this year coming up. You're like, I'm going to do, I'm going to read a scripture every day. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to try to live out that scripture. There are amazing emails. I get an email. I get a devotional email that I read every day. There's tons of stuff out there. Have it sent to you. Say, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to, I'm going to do what God's word says. I'm going to surrender to him. All of those things I read, listen to me, bring glory to God. Do you get it? You don't have to look for this huge purpose, like, like you know, Oh, I want to be a pastor. I want to be this. I want to be that. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be your everyday life living for God. And listen, listen, friends. Bringing him glory, not you. That's your purpose. That's your purpose. So, friends, if you're looking for purpose this Christmas, or you're looking for purpose for 2024 because it's right around the corner, it's only found in Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's the message today. There's no purpose without God. But your purpose is to bring him glory. And if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never surrendered, I want to give you that opportunity to do today. Maybe you've been playing around with God a little bit. You're coming to church, but you're getting into things you shouldn't be into. Maybe today's a day like, I'm going to pray this, and i gotta, I got to surrender 100%. I just got to go in. Here's the prayer. Can you put it up, Jade? Here's the prayer. Can you say it with me? Can you say it with me? Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I surrender to you. I believe that Jesus died for me and today is in heaven. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Thanks for loving me. 
and I love you. Stand with me, church. If you prayed that for the first time, or if you prayed it just to surrender to God, we have a great book for you because it just helps you with what decision you just made. I'm going to be at the piano if anybody needs one. And maybe if you have a friend who needs one, you can come up and get a book. They're absolutely free. It's just your journey now, your journey, because life is different, because now you're, you have a purpose. Now Jesus is your Savior. God, thank you so much for today. And Lord, we truly are in all of you that you would come to earth for us to rescue us, to redeem us, and to give us a purpose. God, we're not just here taking up space, but you've given us a purpose. I pray that each one of my friends today would know that purpose and would bring you glory in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Hopefully we'll see you tonight.